Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to continue our discussion about uh, DF betas and how you can ob obtain them using Stata. Um, there were a couple of um, typos in uh, the previous page that I was uh, showing you, so I'm just going to kind of rework through this to make sure that you have a pretty good understanding about what, what to do. Um, so, you know, basically with the DF betas, essentially what you're doing is you're trying to identify cases that may be having an undue influence on individual regression parameters, so specifically the regression slopes for your predictor variables. And uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use uh, this uh, right here as um, in my syntax, and I'll kind of explain what, the, what each of these pieces are. And the previous video I kind of had generated one, but I, I just deleted those and I thought I would just kind of start over on, on this. So You'll use the predict command and then the DF beta, and then inside the parenthesis, you're going to use the name of your one of your um, predictor variables from the model. Uh, keep in mind that sometimes when you go through multiple kinds of um, analyses and so forth, it's almost like Stata may sometimes forget uh, about what the original um, analysis was. And, you know, when you're generating the, the Cooks D or the DF betas or DF fits, it's all based on the original regression solution. So, you know, kind of when you start doing a lot of things in, uh, in the intervening time, it's almost like you end up with, uh, the, it seems to forget um, about what the original uh, analysis was. So that's why you have me kind of doing some analyses up here and you can see the red. And so I just ended up rerunning the analysis so that I could gen you know, use the, the predict commands in order to um, generate the DF beta variables. So at any rate, so I have to do that. And then uh, this right here, this is basically the name of whatever you want to call the, whatever you want to call uh, the, uh, the the new variable that comes in your data set. So I'm just being descriptive here and just saying df uh, df beta and then I'll I'll start off with gender as my independent variable right here. So I have to put in the parenthesis um, you know gender. So I'm going to move this over, put it in there and um, you know and then I'm going to hit uh, enter and so I have a new variable in my data set called df beta gender. Um, and then I'm going to do the same for the other variables. So I'll say DF beta, um, you know, subject matter interest, and I'm going to say DF beta, and then I have to have the exact name for that variable, put it in here, and then in parenthesis, and there you go. So now that variable is now included um, in the uh, data set. Uh, I'll do the same for uh, mastery goals. DF beta, and inside the parenthesis, I'm just going to use mastery goals. In parenthesis, there you go. That variable is now included as well. And then I'll do it for the fourth predictor as well. So predict DF beta, and I'll just uh, call this AnX for anxiety, DF beta, and then the name of the original variable, and now that's included. So then, uh, you know, really in terms of detecting which cases um, are influential, uh, we'll use a uh, rule of thumb, which is um, essentially uh, taking 2 divided by the square root of n. So we'll say we have 50 cases, um, and, uh, you know, essentially, so 50 cases, we'll take the square root, which is 7.07, so we're going to say 2 divided by 7.07, and our, our threshold for an influential case on a given parameter is going to be 0.28. So I can say sort, and I'm going to sort on, uh, I'll start off with uh, gender. Okay, and the thing about it is, is that, you know, those, uh, you know, those DF betas are actually, um, you know, they can be either positive or negative. So really, I, I, you know, I could either generate the absolute values on that and look for the absolute value that is greater than uh, 0.28, or I can just kind of go and, and list and then look at the negative values and positive values and look for the absolute value that's greater than that threshold. So I'm just actually going to just stick with that. I'm just going to say list. D, F, beta, gender, 
and uh, that lists all the cases. And so you can see that, you know, oh, excuse me, let me uh, actually add in, I want to add in the ID. So I'm going to say list if beta gender. And um, actually, I'm going to include ID as well. So now I get the, the ID as well as the DF beta for genders. And so you can see that um, you know, uh, case number 12, case number 9, uh, case number 48, um, you know, these three cases uh, appear to be having an influence on the regression coefficient for uh, associated with gender. And then you've also got cases 5 and 7 also having influence. So you got 5, 7. Uh, cases 5, 7, uh, 9, 12, and 48 as potentially having um, particular influence on that regression parameter. Uh, then I can say list ID, and then um, we'll use DF beta for subject matter interest. And so here you can see we've got um, essentially, um, oh, actually, I didn't sort on that first. so. So I'm saying it's a little tricky sometimes. You got to be able, uh, you know, stay uh, in, in touch with a lot of different moving parts. So I'm going to say sort on DF beta for um, subject matter interest. Oops. Okay, and then I'm going to say list ID DF beta S. And so there it is. So, you know, you can see it's sorted from, uh, you know, m the most negative to the most positive. So you can see we would have case seven, uh, case number five, as being uh, having a particular influence on the, re on, um, on the regression parameter for subject matter interest. And then also we would have cases 36, 15, and 48 as, and uh, case number 14 as having um, an influence. So at any rate, um, and you can just continue this process uh, throughout uh, the remaining uh, DF beta variables. So um, that kind of concludes uh, this uh, discussion and um, hope you found it helpful.